Acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is a cancer of the blood-forming cells, which originate in the bone marrow. AML is the most common kind of acute leukemia in adults, affecting about 13,000 people in the United States every year, with 9,000 deaths. The most common presentation, de novo AML, occurs without any history of a blood disorder or any family history of AML. Many of the mutations that contribute to AML were initially discovered by examining the chromosomes of AML cells. For example, fusion of the PML gene on chromosome 15 and the RAR alpha gene on chromosome 17 was first detected by cytogenetic studies of AML samples. These mutations can easily be detected with fluorescence in situ hybridization studies, as shown here. The red probe detects PML, and the green probe detects RAR alpha. The regions where the red and green dots are juxtaposed represent the PML RAR alpha and reciprocal RAR alpha PML fusion events. Cytogenetic analysis is used to classify a patient's risk profile in order to design a treatment plan, but many patients have normal karyotypes indicating an intermediate risk of relapse. Since the outcomes of these patients are highly variable, a more precise method for determining risk is needed. To address this problem, investigators with the Cancer Genome Atlas Research Network are evaluating AML genomes. 200 samples that had been banked at Washington University in St. Louis were selected for analysis, representing all the well-described morphologic and cytogenetic subtypes of the disease in real-world proportions. DNA sequence changes that occurred in tumor cells were identified by comparing the sequence of each AML sample with the sequence of a sample of normal skin cells from the same patient. Four different approaches were used to sequence the samples. For 50 pairs of samples, whole genome sequencing was performed. Whole genome sequencing can detect somatic mutations in the genome, including regions outside of genes. Although not as sensitive as other sequencing strategies, it can also identify structural changes in the genome, such as amplifications, deletions, and gene fusion events. For the remaining 150 samples, the coding sequences of all known genes, known as exomes, were sequenced. This strategy is more sensitive than whole genome sequencing, but it yields sequence for only about 1% of the genome. It generally does not detect mutations in the rest of the genome and is less useful for detecting structural alterations. Nearly all AML samples were analyzed on RNA expression arrays. Messenger RNAs and microRNAs were also sequenced. RNA sequencing is useful for detecting levels of gene expression and for finding expressed fusion genes since many copies of the fusion messenger RNA are often present in the sample. RNA sequence data can measure the extent to which a mutated gene is expressed, and that can provide clues about the potential importance of mutations for disease pathogenesis. DNA methylation patterns for nearly all the AML samples were evaluated as well. DNA methylation is an epigenetic event that can influence gene expression. Levels of DNA methylation are sometimes related to levels of expression of nearby genes implying a regulatory relationship. As compared with several solid tumor types that have been sequenced, the genomes of adult patients with de novo AML have a small number of genetic mutations. On average, there are only 13 mutations in genes in each AML genome, and an average of five mutations are in genes that are recurrently mutated. Across the 200 tumor samples, 23 genes were found to be significantly mutated. Sample size, Sequence coverage and size of the gene in question were taken into account, since large genes are more likely to acquire mutations by chance. Significantly mutated genes are likely to have an important role in tumor initiation or progression, or both. To better understand the way in which the mutated genes mediate tumor behavior, the genes were categorized into nine gene sets according to their predicted biologic functions. One example of a gene set includes genes that encode FLT3 and KIT, which are signaling proteins. Another set includes myeloid transcription factors. Each column in the graph represents one patient sample. If a patient's AML harbors a mutation in a particular gene, a bar appears in the corresponding position. Of the 200 patients, 199 had a mutation in at least one of the genes in these sets. Some mutations tend to occur together in the same AML sample, suggesting that they synergize to promote tumor initiation, progression, or both. For example, mutations in the gene NPM1 tend to co-occur with mutations in DNMT3A and FLT3. 
Patterns of co-occurrence and mutual exclusivity among mutated genes reveal relationships between genes and pathways that may be important for the biology of the tumor. Pairs of genes or gene sets in which mutations are mutually exclusive are indicated by red dotted lines. Pairs of genes in which mutations tend to co-occur and potentially synergize are indicated by blue lines. The thicker the line, the more prevalent the co-occurrence of mutations. One of the most prominent associations is between NPM1, DNMT3A, and FLT3. Mutations in these genes tend to occur in tumors with an intermediate risk cytogenetic profile, and patients with all three mutations may have a new subtype of AML. In this visualization of gene fusions detected by RNA sequencing, the genes involved are arrayed around the perimeter of the circle. Lines connecting the genes indicate a fusion product between them. The thickness of the line is proportional to the prevalence of the fusion detected. Patterns of messenger RNA expression revealed seven different clusters of AML samples. Tumor samples are arrayed across the top, and individual genes are shown from top to bottom. Profiles of microRNA expression are segregated into five clusters. Methylation profiles are also separated into discrete clusters. Distinct relationships among mutation patterns and expression and methylation profiles were discovered. For example, the group of samples with co-occurring mutations in NPM1, FLT3, and DNMT3A were associated with distinct messenger RNA, microRNA, and methylation patterns. This study was powered to identify nearly all the mutations occurring in at least 5% of patients with AML, and it revealed many new relationships between the mutational and epigenetic landscapes of AML. These findings provide an important foundation for the study of AML pathogenesis, classification, and risk stratification.